Daniel chapter 6, and those visiting for the first time, we and our others know that we're in the book of Daniel. And so we hope that your life has been changed and, and uh, helped. And we're looking forward to today's um, message of Daniel. I guess you can tell I've been pretty excited about old Daniel. If you've been visiting here or listening... And uh, so we're going to take another shot today. Let's stand together and I'll be reading some verses. We'll not read the whole chapter, but you listen to my uh, calling the verses. Daniel chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom an hundred and twenty princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Verse 4 and 5. Then the presidents and princes sought to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. 7. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Verse 10 and 11. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem... He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Verse 15 and 16. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. 20 through 23. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel, And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Now then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. Twenty-five and twenty-six. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God. And steadfast forever. And his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. And his dominion shall be even unto the end.
May God bless His Word. You may be seated. The title of the message, An Unshakable Faith. An Unshakable Faith. Now I want some of you to help me here, just to begin with, as an introduction. When you hear the word lion, what is the first word or phrase that you think of? Someone. Uh, pardon? Help. Well, okay, what's another one? Fear. Power. Uh, what is this one that started with a T? Mighty. Someone said Tara? All right, thank you so much. That's a, that's a great response. I, I thought about a few different ones. Roar. That scares me. Hey, did anybody think about teeth? <laughs> I, uh, you, you've seen the pictures of the powerful, you know, those front teeth. That's a predator's teeth, you know, tearing flesh. Well, we come today to another great story of Bible history. Daniel and the lion's den. But I want you to know when you leave here today, it's not about just Daniel in a lion's den. It's Daniel coming through a lion's den. And some of you, and maybe even myself, this day are going through a den of lions. It can be different things, different ways of life. And I want you to listen carefully today. Please, our God, the true God of heaven and earth, waits to make Himself known in your lion's den. First of all today, number one, it should appear on the screen, even now. God has a special position for your life. God has a special position for your life. For your life. Now let's look at the scripture. Brother Daniel has served under six administrations of government leaders. Do you know what I like to say to Daniel when I see him one day in glory? Lord have mercy on you for six presidents or uh, administrations. Just think of that. How would you like to serve in the government for that period of time? Only God could have put him there. And he put him there. The Bible says in verse 3, he had an excellent spirit. That means his, his mind and his heart was indwelt by the Spirit of God. That's the only way he could do that. And I want you to notice this now. You think of the pictures that you see of Daniel. He is always young. I want you to know, senior citizen... He is in the upper level of a senior citizen. He's got to be close to 85 years of age. Because we began in the first chapter, and he was taken down as a teenage boy out of the land of Israel and promote, sent to Babylon as a captive, a slave. Probably around the 15 age range in the middle teen years. So it's almost the end of Babylonian captivity because they'll be going home soon. And they stayed, they stayed there 70 years, so add 15 and 70. Now, he's been that way since a young teen. Faithful in heart, wise in mind, humble in integrity, pure in his body. And all the while a slave in a pagan land called Babylon. How could he be in that position? The true God of heaven put him there. He's filled him with his mighty spirit. He's given him courage and power and an unshakable faith. Say that with me. An unshakable faith. I believe God is looking for some Daniels in positions of life today. 
Don't you think God would like some Daniels in the government? In Washington, D.C., in our state capitals, in our local governments? Well, what about, isn't he looking for some Daniels in our homes today? Men of God with integrity and purity and holiness and will stand for the truth. That's what he's looking for in the homes. Godly men, Christian men, faithful men. Look in the workplaces, the marketplace, some may say. Honorable businessmen, men of high integrity. Women in places of business. What about the churches? Daniels in the pulpit. Daniels as pastors. Daniels in our teachers' positions. Stand up! Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Are we doing it? Dear ones, I'm in a position called pastor at this very hour. I don't want to back down, shut up, stay down, give up, or give out until I go up and be with our blessed Lord. Amen? You know Billy Graham, don't you? He's a counselor and friend of six United States presidents. Isn't that something? Daniel walked through six administrations. I don't think Billy could have taken it, not staying around the, the White House or the other places for six uh, different uh, presidents, you know. But anyway, he, it was very good that he could be there and encourage and help uh, the different leaders of our country. But now back here in Babylon, the Medes and the Persians are on tops of the world scene. Did you know what happened when another government came to take over another government? All the leaders were executed. Now, I'm going to shock you here when I say this. One historical writing said 3,000 of Babylonian leaders throughout the country <coughs> wiped out. 3,000. Now, if you'll notice in your Bible, chapter 5 and verse 29, who is the third ruler in the kingdom? A few verses before we get to Darius, the king of the Medes and the Persians, it said Daniel is third in line. He was moved to the third position of the country, of the government. Now, where is he now? Why wasn't he executed? Because God delivered him. He didn't want him executed. And he put into the heart of Darius and later Cyrus, the Persian, that this Daniel was something special. He had an excellent spirit. He's a man of God. And they knew that. And they wouldn't touch him. God kept him from touching him. God sets up those in the position he wants them. And he can bring you down when he wants you. Our God is king of all earthly kings and leaders. Daniel was God's man because he had an unshakable faith. Darius saw it in him. He was in God's position at God's hour. Let me ask you, I could talk about this for a whole message. What position does God have you in right now? That's a great application question to think about, but we don't have time to do that, so we move along. All right, God puts us in a special position. Number two, watch the screen. God knows the evil plots of evil men. God knows the evil plots of evil men. Now, can't you see them? There are 122 princes and presidents. You may call them governors and top administration, administrators of the land. The reason I didn't say 123, because if you'll notice in chapter 6, verse 1, there are 120 princes Verse 2, there are three presidents. One is Daniel, and Daniel's not at this meeting now. So there's 122 evil heads in the government realm. 
They're meeting. Can't you see them now in secret? That's a, that's a lot like Washington, D.C., isn't it? We've got to get rid of this old Jew, this senior citizen, old white-haired, gray-headed man with a beard. I'm tired of this Jew. He's too high. He's got too much power. He's too smart. That's what they're saying. Jealousy. You know, envy. Uh, somebody say it's like gang green. Ugly, nasty, green and yellow. It moves through your mind and heart. I've got to have that position. I've got to get that. I'm going to take your place. You see it? The dastardly plot to take Daniel out of the picture. Now let's suppose today that the Medes have their FBI and the Persian guards have their secret service. They're out trying to find some dirt. They have their informers. Or we might say they want to get some good mud on Daniel and smear his character. So let's think about it. There's one FBI man. Well, let's see. I find him this right and he says... It proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the king's food and drink. Well, we can't get anything. He can't be a drunk. He can't be a glutton. He's faultless in his conduct. We, we got to scratch that off. Well, there's a secret service man over there. He said, hmm, let me look through some of these papers here. Let's see all the laws that he's helped establish. Not a one he hasn't carried out by the king's order. He's on top of every one. Faithful in all his duties. And then there's another guard over there. He says, I even bugged his room and I can't find anything about him. Zero. You know, a prayer came to me. Let me share it with you. Heavenly Father, would you look down upon us this day in mercy? Would you raise up pure youth and young adults to be leaders of tomorrow? Would you raise up faithful middle adults who will stand with courage and speak the truth of your word? Would you raise up flawless seniors who've walked with you through the years and help them continue in obedience to your will and way? And then, Father, those on the outside, that unbelieving lost group, as they rise up against us, would they be able to see that group of God-fearing, faithful servants? Over there, would they see that they had been with Jesus, the Son of God, that they are real disciples who make the real deal? And God, would You let them see that there's a different kind of spirit in them because they're led by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, help them to possess an unshakable faith in You. You know, that's the kind of prayer Daniel would like. Oh, back to the private meeting of the country's leaders. We got the jealous lines now. Lines, quotes, not animals. Those leaders are like lions. Can't you see their teeth? Can't you see them exercising their paws, their power? They're trying to dig up any kind of dirt and sling any mud they can find. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, I'd hate to have had the television going back then. News broadcast on every channel. The internet access, the webs across the world. Someone came up with a Smart plan. We can't find anything personally about his life. We can't find anything politically that he's done wrong as a leader. We're going to play the religious card. Let's hit Daniel where it hurts. We know he's a praying man. He doesn't pray to our gods. He doesn't pray to the Babylonian gods. He prays to that God of heaven, they call it, the Lord God of Israel. I'll tell you what, we'll devise a plot. Present it to the king. 
we're going to flatter that king and boost his ego so we'll get him to sign this decree and put it in law that if anyone, any person, prays to any god or man other than the king for the 30 days, his penalty will be a night in the lion's den. Can't you see them? They're snickering now. Few over there is snickering. Few over there is laughing out loud. Another one says, we'll be rid of that sorry old wise Jew for the last time. He'll be gone. He'll be in the stomach churning with the lion. Won't that be a fun night to see? Envy. Jealousy. Hey guys, we're going to be promoted to the next in line. We're going to take this Daniel out and we're going up. The latter. Did you know what happened here in the United States in around 2002 in our government? I will not call the name of the person because I, am not, I didn't check it by uh, 2002, but I'm pretty sure it was right by this writer. In the bid for re-election as one of Indiana's representatives to Washington, that's the House of Representatives, she didn't play a religious card, she played the race card. In a debate with her opponent, she got up and walked out. Reason? She implied her opponent, opponent was racist. Her proof? He's sharing a photo of me in his advertisements. He's drawing attention to my race. She played the card. She got away with it. And she won. Barely. But she won. Let's go back to the chambers of the Medo-Persian leadership. They played the religion game, twisted and deceived their own king. Now they're waiting to see Daniel eaten alive by the roaring lions. You talk about a crisis in the government house? It was a crisis, all right. Thirdly, look to the screen. God waits for the prayers of His godly ones. Did you get that? Prayers, that's a key word, of His godly one. Uh, Daniel knows the decree, the law, says it here in the Scripture. Signed by the king, made broadcast about it, knows the consequences. Pray to any other god or man. Lion's den. For an overnight stay. Now, think of verse 10 with me again, okay? You, you, know, you know the picture here. He goes back to his room. The windows are open. and He prays. Think of this. Does the Bible say Daniel ran as fast as his old legs could go and he found a favorite hiding place? Is that what the Bible said? No. Did it say he got on his phone? Boy, I wonder if he had a cell phone then. He, when he called up all the friends. Hey, guys! Man, he'd be calling everybody. You've got to get me out of here. Get the fastest horse. Get the biggest chariot. I've got to get out of here. They're going to put me in the lion's den. I'm scared to death. I didn't say that. Not a word. Daniel obeyed God rather than men. You get that? Daniel obeyed God rather than men with their government and laws. The law of the king, devised by these 122 evil cats, and we call them lions, it didn't cause Daniel to change one thing about his ordinary life. Let me tell you something. Unless you get into this holy word of God daily, 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 upstairs, daily. Is everybody listening? Unless... You stay in a customary daily mode of life with the Word of God, the lines will get closer and closer. They strike that paw on you. Better watch it. The Bible says three times a day he nailed. That was his way. It was central to his life to worship God. He went up slowly up those stairs. I guarantee you he didn't run one step. I mean, if he's 85, gosh, I can't run at 57. 
Now just think about old Daniel. Did he have a cane or a pole? I don't know. Doesn't say. He may have. He may have had a special walker. But I guarantee you, he didn't pay one bit of attention to those 122 princes, evil cats, lions out there. He walked straight to his little house. I can see him slowly going up to the steps into that little room. And I can see the window open. Just imagine now this front window right here that I'm looking at. You see the front window? Is everybody looking over here at the window? Don't look at me. So look at that window. That window's open. It's wide open. And in that western sky, the sun is shining. And he's kneeling. He just jumped right down on his knees. He lifts his head to the heavens. And he calls on the Lord God Almighty. Now, thanking God for his blessings, praising him for wisdom, strength, courage. Why did he do that? He's always done it since he's been a young fella. He didn't change anything. Kneeling three times a day. I thought about some of you with the bionic knees. How many got bionic knees? Don't raise your hand. We call it bionic knees. That's, that's old Bill Harvey's uh, idea years ago. Bionic knees. Well, I still got plain knees. And I'll tell you what. David, don't you be laughing down there. I saw you a while ago. <laughs> David and I, we can't hardly get up. Paul gets up better than I do. In our prayer time. Dave's having a little bit harder time. Do you know, God, God's not... It, it's, it's really, folks, it's a picture of humility. It, but you don't have to kneel and put your knees down. If you, if you can't get up, it's all right. Just sit. Just be still before a holy God. It's all right. He wants to know your heart is right. That's, that's what he's concerned about. But anyway, Brother Daniel, in the face of that heathen pagan government, stood... Straight for God. Loved God through prayer. He stood tall because he got down on his knees. Isn't Daniel a great encouragement for us? He didn't change anything with the pressures on. His faith was so unshakable, unconquerable, just dead on. Full of God. Full of the Spirit. You know what? Any grade in the circumstances of life that we need folks who are consistent, who stay at it, stay with it, day after day. Love God with all their heart, in example, in word, in deed. This is what Daniel had. I tell you this, I could preach a three-point message right here. Those who want to preach a three-point message, power, performance, and purity. You believe Daniel had that? Power, purity. Let, let, me, let me tell you something about purity. I, I found this little story. A man went to the fast food restaurant. He spoke through the window, you know. He said, I'd like a, like a box of chicken. He was going on a picnic, you know. So he got the box in the car, and he and the lady, they went down to the beach. And he went in there to open his box. And he opened that chicken box, and it was full of money. Is everybody with me? Stay with me. Watch it. He opened that chicken box, and it's full of money. He said, oh, no. Where did that come from? He realized it was receipts from the day's payments back at the, the restaurant. So he said, oh, gosh, I've I got to take it back. I, I, just can't, I just can't keep this. So his honest man, you know, went back to the restaurant, went to the manager, uh, said, I'm sorry, sir, you got something mixed up. Uh, you put your uh, receipts for the day and... See, he was trying to cover, camouflage the money before he took it out that evening. So the manager said, oh, this is very great. You're, you're just a wonderful man. He said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to call the news reporter. This is worth putting on television and the news and radio and everything. He said, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait just a minute. He said, that woman out in the car is not my wife. <laughs> Hello. Hello. 
Now, he was pure with the money, but a sorry rascal in his life. You know, I, I thought about some. What if Daniel could get a hold of him? Man, you're talking about putting a stick on him. Daniel would have wakened him up. Anyway, you can't pretend to be trustworthy and pure. Don't, don't play the hypocrite game because God knows. Now, other people won't know, but God will know. Well, back to Daniel, praying in his room now, and there come the informers. I call them the hit men. You, you may call them tattletales. I don't know. I call them the devil's team and the jealous politicians. We don't have any envious politicians, do we? Just look at there. There's a wise old Daniel. He's praying to the Lord God in that room upstairs. We caught him in the act. His goose is cooked now. Man, I can see him getting so excited. Just laughing and cheering on. They run back to the king. Uh-uh, you, you can't reverse this order. You signed it with your own signature. Didn't you do that, King Darius? Now, King Darius, in verses 13 and 14, he's torn all to pieces. That's just the way I put in old South Carolina logo, I guess. Torn all to pieces. Heart's broken. He knows that's a foolish law. He tries every way he can to get Daniel. I, I bet he's writing. He's writing on pieces of parchment, whatever he's got. He's calling those, uh, some of those 122 top guns back into his little room. Say, so we've got to do something. Daniel's too special. He, he's a wise friend. He, he's helped our country. Don't you know we've got to do something? Send him to the lion's den now. You signed it, O king. It's your fault. Send him. Yeah, they're snickering and laughing and grinning. Can't you see them? Daniel begins to walk to the lion's den. King says in verse 16, look at these words, friend. This, I'm telling you, God does wonderful things. Just, just look at the word here. Just look here. Then the king commanded and brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. And the king spake and said to Daniel, Thy God, does, does everybody with me? Your God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. This is a pagan, heathen, ungodly king. How can he say that? Because God's Spirit put it in him to recognize in Daniel a true man of the true God. All right? That's the only way. The grace of God put it in him. Daniel's walking away. Daniel's going to the lion's den and Darius now is walking. Now I want you to think of this. He said that great statement of faith and I can see his hands over his face. Can you see that? Darius, this is a king now. He's walking back. And I guarantee you that there's wet liquid dropping through his fingers, the palms of his hands. Number four. Watch the screen. God moves with powerful protection over his chosen one. The word is protection. Powerful protection over his godly ones. Well, Darius has arrived back at the palace now. He's walked up the stairs to his bedroom. He's in sheer agony. He, he's the most miserable sight you've ever seen. 
Bible tells us there's no music going on, no food, he's fasting, no dancing, no women. He doesn't know what to do. Nothing can soothe his mind. He's broken. Now think of this. Why is King Darius so broken? Friends, he's going to lose his greatest friend. And he's going to lose a man of God. He knows it. Daniel is his top wise administrator. Who wants to lose that? Now we're back to the lion's den. Daniel is shoved in. And the door shut. Out pounces that male, ferocious, hairy lion. And his teeth are wide. His mouth is wide open. Can't you see that big one? And he's going toward Daniel. Daniel's right over there. He's right over there. He's headed toward him. Then they open the cage. Two more mother lions. You, you've seen those mother lions. They, they're, the real, they're the real deal, friends. They, they really chase down the, 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 the predator or the, or the prey to kill the prey. So they come from the corner. Their mouths are wide open. Then the little fellows, the little cubs, they're, they're running. They're just waiting for their spoils. And suddenly, as quick as a Flash of lightning. God sends that mighty angel. You know what he looks like? I, I believe this is, a, this is a good picture. I do not know. You have to imagine your own picture. But I can see this. He's standing there with a mighty sword and he's such glistening in the white, whiter than snow. The glorious light from heaven is just, it's just like a beam. And those lines, the mouths close, and they drop on all four. And they lay there, and they, I'm sure they look at each other like, what in the world is going on here? Once I saw a piece of flesh. Now they can't see anything. I believe he blinded them. The amazing light of glory from heaven. You think of that. Now Daniel is on his knees. A miracle has happened. Daniel's night with the lions becomes a safe, peaceful night. Only God could do that. Now it's morning. There's King Darius. He couldn't sleep. Heart's pounding. He worried to death. All shook up. And he goes up to the den. Hey, Daniel! Has your God delivered you? I want to paraphrase here, please. Daniel's voice, echoing through the walls of that mighty den. Hey, King! It's all right down here. I'm not hurt a bit. No scratch. No bite. There's not even been a roar since I first stepped in. My God, the Lord God of heaven and earth, He showed up big time. He closed the lion's mouth. Look over here. Can you see me down here? I'm rubbing that old, mean, hairy lion. Look at that. And he's smiling at me. And there, there's a mother. I'm rubbing her, don't you see? I told you, I'm innocent before God and before you, O King. My God has protected me. Can't you see Darius? All oh, that sad face. He was so sad and weeping. Now his face is like a shining light. He just beaming from ear to ear. Tears of joy. Get my friend Daniel out of there, guys. Get him out now. 
Daniel's lifted out, verse 23, because he believed God, unshakable faith. Now, I want you to pay careful attention here, friends. God will not protect his evil ones. He can destroy in a split second the mighty wrath of his hand. You know what the Bible says, don't you? You, 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 be, you better watch it, friends. This is real deal. You know what the Bible said in verse 24? Smart Alex, evil plotters, who ran Daniel into the lion's den, now they're going in the lion's den. And not only they... The Bible says the children and the wives, the whole families are going into the lion's den. Beware that your sin can have an effect on your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. You better watch it. You better be careful. And the Bible says, I'll paraphrase, they were torn to shreds and eaten alive. Number five. Is everybody with me? Say yes. God desires an amazing proclamation of who He is. A proclamation about the true God. I want to give me some leeway here, a little paraphrasing to King Darius looks around. He knows Daniel was saved from the power of the lions by the true God of heaven. He wants God, the true God, to be His God. And He's going to give an edict, a law, a decree, a statute to go out to all the world of that day. Now that, that's an amazing thing. Just think about that. I began to think, suppose I am the President of the United States. And I make this following decree on national television. It's carried live on all television stations, all radio stations, and on the World Wide Web. My fellow Americans, I, Donald Page, the President of this United States, greet you. And I send this message to all Americans, and to all peoples of this whole earth, every nation, tribe, and tongue, and language, peace be to you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, His Son. I call upon you to fear the Lord, the God who raised Daniel out of the den of lions. I want you to know He is the living God the eternal God who never changes. And His kingdom will never be destroyed. And I advise you this hour to consider that His Son, Jesus Christ, came to be the Savior of this world and your very own Savior. And that Jesus will one day be Lord of all. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Would you believe Him? Will you trust Him? He delivers, He rescues and works miracles in heaven and on this earth. I adjure you this hour to trust Him. Would you do it? 
Dear people, this story is more than a story about Daniel in a lion's den. It's a story of unshakable faith and an unshakable God. It is a story of facing the lines in your daily life. Will you be a person of great integrity, humble prayer, and spiritual courage? Have you examined your faith lately? It's a story about Almighty God bringing down mighty men and leaders and people. It is a story about a king of all kings, Lord of all lords, who moves his hand from his throne room of glory. It is a story of God's power and protection in the life of his chosen servants. Are you one? It's a story about you. And it's a story about me. I call you this hour to acknowledge Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Would you do it? Are you ready to be saved? Is there any conviction of the power of the Spirit of God in your life showing you that you need Him? He wants to give you a new life, you see. Eternal life. A salvation life. Today, tomorrow, and forever. Would you trust Him? Would you come by the way of the cross? Say, you died for me, Jesus. I want you to be my Savior and Lord. Maybe you're here today and you need to come into His body, called the body of Christ, the church. He's calling you. Come. Attach yourself. Build yourself up in the body of Christ. Grow in Christ. Share Christ. Live for Christ. And then, He's calling some of you to be a Daniel of prayer. To kneel, to bow, to humble yourself, to sit, to think, to read His Word, to call upon Him day after day after day. Ask for His blessings and power. Could you do that? He's waiting for Daniels to stand up, rise up and go forward in His name. Would you do it? Let's pray together. Father God, thank You for the unshakable faith of this dear Daniel. What a great man and prophet of God. Thank You for His life, His testimony, His courage, His boldness, His spirit. Oh Lord, who is it this hour that needs to come to Jesus and trust Him as Savior Lord? Who is it who needs to come into the church? Who is it who needs to become a prayer warrior, a prayer soldier, not for just physical sick, but for those spiritually sick, for our nation, for this world. Oh God, move among your people at this very moment. We ask in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen.